Welcome to Swipe from the University of Cambridge. Here's a little taste of what you can expect from us in the next 10 minutes. We're joining a transatlantic cyber security contest and finding out how Britain can improve when it comes to cyber defense. Then in our games review, we get our hands on the new Nintendo 2DS XL. This week's show is a bit of a cyber defense special. Here at the University of Cambridge, some of the most talented students from the UK and the US have been competing as international cyber hunters in a three-day hackathon showdown. And to explain their mission, Here's Chris. There's a number of steps and challenges that they have to work through. We're hacking into the software that controls a drone. It's a task set up to test students at the cybersecurity competition. And while it's a simulation, it's meant to replicate the sort of scenario we could expect to see in real life. It could just as easily be a, a web front end to a, an industrial control system, like a, a power grid or some sort of manufacturing plant with bigger, more dangerous equipment running in the background. The Cambridge to Cambridge competition sees over 100 cybersecurity students taking part in various hacking challenges. Teams from the UK and America compete over three days, working against the clock to defend or attack mock security networks. There are some missile bunkers in a remote country which the special forces are trying to uh, get access to. and. Behind enemy lines, someone has managed to get a copy of a laptop, of a hard disk, of someone who belongs to the enemy. We're trying to build a picture of you know, where these um, missile sites are and their capabilities and who's involved without actually being on the ground. Obviously, it requires a bit of imagination. But the idea is to add a sense of gravity to the occasion while also making it fun. There's even leaderboards and a war room where a referee watches out for cheating. The students certainly don't look stressed given the fate of their nation lies at their fingertips. There are aspects that are very realistic and of course nothing is ever as realistic as the real thing. But the underlying technical issues, understanding what vulnerabilities and what kinds of mistakes in the way we design computer systems, that's a real world experience that's made extremely real by doing these kinds of competitions. We've seen a notable rise in hacking attacks in the last few months. And while this competition might not be a substitute for the real thing, it provides valuable training for the cyber warriors of the future. Chris Krieg and Sky News. In a couple of minutes, I'll be speaking to one of the country's top cyber security professors and finding out what he fears the most about our future. It's coming up after a roundup of some of this week's other tech stories. Our roads may be full of electric and hybrid cars by 2050. It's after plans were announced by the government to ban the sale of new diesel and petrol cars in the UK from 2040. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos topped Bill Gates as the world's richest person, even if it was only for a matter of hours. Shares in Amazon surged on Thursday, putting Bezos' net worth at £69.34 billion, according to Forbes, although when shares fell back, so did Bezos. Another pair of mighty tech names who made headlines this week were Tesla's Elon Musk and Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. Musk called Zuckerberg's understanding of artificial intelligence limited after the Facebook chief had suggested he was irresponsible for making public statements about his concerns over AI. And the beginning of a £246 million government investment into battery technology has been launched, which could help bring down household electricity bills. It'll include creating battery facilities to store excess wind and solar energy and a research centre to help make the country a leader in electric battery technology. Sure, it'll be dangerous. Stick around for our games review. We're searching for survivors in Fortnite. But first... Now, one of the reasons this competition was set up was to help hone the right skills among cyber defenders of the future. A little bit earlier, I had a chat with Professor Frank Stoyano. He's one of the co-founders, and I began by asking him what he thinks Britain is doing wrong when it comes to cyber defense. I think Britain is doing many things right, uh, and I'm especially pleased with the help that the National Cybersecurity Center is offering to businesses that may not have the uh, expertise in-house uh, but the one thing that I see as a big problem is that we just don't have enough competent people and this is why uh, I have started with colleagues this competition Cambridge to Cambridge I wish 
to inspire more than just the 110 who are in this room. Most of the stuff you see in computing is about uh, using programs that someone else have written. That's not fun, that's pretty boring. But there's a lot of creativity in engaging with computers and telling computers what to do and basically writing the rules. You get to protect the society, you get to protect your own parents and grandparents from all these attacks that we see in the media every day. Uh, so I just brought my young daughter this morning here uh, at the competition before you arrived. Uh, and I showed her, she's three months old, showed them to the, the competitor and say, look, you guys in the future are going to be the people who defend the society, the digital society that she's going to be living in. So please do it for her. Please do it for your own family. The biggest problem I see so far is that this is something that is thought of as something, just a specialty for geeks with hoodies locked up in their room. That's the wrong image and the wrong message. This is something that is intellectually stimulating. It's a very creative uh, endeavor. What is it that you fear the most about our future? The foundation of this digital society uh, is not as secure as I would like it to be. And the culture that is today prevalent in the industry of the people who make these hardware and software systems does not put a great value on security. That is what I see as the biggest problem because it's a structural thing that's not going to be easy to fix without a complete change of mindset. We're going to break away from Digi Security now and bring you some Digi Entertainment because Alicia has our games review for us this week. Here she is with her pick of the latest releases and a new console. Everyone's been talking about the Nintendo Switch, but there is another Nintendo console that's hitting shelves. This one's called the Nintendo 2DS XL. A lightweight design, some pretty big screens. They've just really honed the design. Everything's a bit smaller, more compact, and easier to play, which is great for if you're playing one of the launch titles, say like Metopia, which is basically like a fantasy RPG where you cast your friends and family as the adventurers who go alongside you. This musical mess could become a major firepower. So that means that you could be going diving headlong into this adventure, but with the cast of your book club playing alongside of you, taking down a dark lord who's also your sister. It's a bit bonkers, but that's what makes it really, really fun. They say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you could say that for Splatoon 2, but what Nintendo's done is they have given their Splatoon franchise a fresh lick of paint. It's a third person shooter but rather than shooting against, say, like enemies like you would in Uncharted, you spray paint. If you're going up in a multiplayer arena, the goal is to cover the walls and the floor and every surface that you can see with your paint color. And then your opponent will try to do the same and whoever covers the ground in the quickest amount of time wins. If you really love the original on your Wii U and you want to play it again on your Nintendo Switch, this is a great jump to the new console. The world of Fortnite is filled with places to explore and loot to scavenge. There are a lot of sandbox crafting games out there at the moment, from Stardew Valley to Minecraft, and Fortnite is the latest game that's kind of jumping into this fray. Sure, it'll be dangerous. I mean, yeah, there's monsters. And it's set in a world where 98% of the population has been ravaged by a devastating event called the storm. So you work with a group of survivors uh, who are running through this world and you're trying to take out these mutant monster things that have taken over the world. Uh, you do that by creating forts. You can run through all the desiccated remains of uh, these buildings and towns and cities and you can gather up loads of resources and then take them to your fort and build essentially a stronghold that caters to your particular playstyle. They don't stand a chance. This is our world and it's time to take it back. Well, that's it from us here in Cambridge this week. Join us again next time for more Swipe. And in the meantime, follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.